So, you want to talk about a defining but often overlooked feature of Ford trucks in the second half of the 20th century? Sure, you come to the right place. But don't expect an earful about the legendary Windsor V8s, bold styling, rock solid rear axles, or groundbreaking transmissions. Now, nope. today, we're talking about getting groceries. Howdy, folks. Ed here. Welcome back to Bullnose Garage. And if you're like me, and groceries feel more like a luxury these days, maybe you've got some time to learn about one of Ford's wildest ideas, the twin I-beam and twin traction beam suspensions. These engineering marvels made everything from grocery runs to off-road adventures more comfortable while driving alignment techs crazy in the process. Today, we're going to dig into what makes this system brilliant, bizarre, and downright infuriating. So settle in. It's going to be a cushy ride. Hello. Ford's twin I-beam suspension debuted in 1965 on the F-Series trucks. The goal was simple, create a suspension that combined the strength of a solid axle with the comfort of independent suspension. And let's be honest, Ford absolutely nailed the durability part. This setup could take a beating on a rugged job site or muddy trail and still bring it home in one piece. The twin I-beam was revolutionary for its time. Instead of a single solid axle running across the front, Ford split it into two beams, each mounted to the frame on its own pivot point. The design gave each wheel independent movement while maintaining the strength needed for a truck. Fast forward to the early 80s, and Ford evolved the concept into the twin traction beam for their 4x4 models. The TTB added a differential to the mix, allowing for independent movement in an off-road capable drivetrain. These designs stuck around for decades. The twin I-beam was a staple in Ford's two-wheel drive trucks, while the twin traction beam dominated the front ends of 4x4 models well into the 90s. And though they've been replaced by more modern systems today, they remain a favorite for off-road enthusiasts and anyone who appreciates overbuilt engineering. So, let's head over to my stripped-down 1995 F-150 chassis, and I can break the system down and show you how these parts work together. The twin I-beam consists of two large forged steel beams. Each beam pivots on a frame on a bracket and connects to the wheel hub at the outer end. Ford engineered these beams to be tough because they had to be. These trucks weren't just for show, they worked hard, hauling, towing, and tackling rugged terrain. Each beam uses a radius arm to control forward and backward movement. These arms connect the beams to the frame, providing stability. Coil springs or leaf springs, depending on the model, support the truck's weight, while shocks handle the damping. The twin traction beam builds on this concept by adding a front differential and CV axles. This setup enables four-wheel drive functionality while retaining independent beam movement. The main tweak is that one beam is split to house the differential with a slip joint handling axle length changes during suspension movement. Okay, so let's get into the fun stuff. First, I'll jack up one wheel to show you how independent articulation works. Notice how one wheel moves while the other stays put. That's the magic of a twin I-beam. It's kind of like an independent suspension, but keeps the rugged simplicity of a solid axle design. Those pivot points are doing all the heavy lifting here. I'll grab a level and watch this. As the suspension travels, you'll see the camber angle shift. This dynamic camber is one of the system's quirks. While it's awesome for off-road capability, it's a nightmare for tire wear and alignment precision. Alignment techs watching this are probably groaning already, and yeah, I get it. Let me show you something. Here's an image of my chassis before I took the engine and transmission off, and here it is afterwards. You see the dramatic difference in camber? If that's not a quirk, then I don't know what is. Finally, let's take a closer look at the wear points. Here at the bushings, you can see how years of hard work and rough roads take their toll. The ball joints and radius arm mounts are other common failure points. If you're running one of these, keep an eye on these parts. They'll save you a headache later. The twin I-beam debuted on the 1965 F-Series and remained a go-to for Ford's two-wheel drive trucks through the late 90s. The twin traction beam arrived in 1980, making its debut in the F-Series and Bronco 4x4 models. It stuck around until the late 90s too, when Ford moved to more modern independent front suspension designs. These systems showed up on everything from work trucks to off-road rigs. They even gained popularity on custom builds and Baja racers 
thanks to their durability and the ability to handle heavy loads in extreme terrain. But while the twin I-Beam and TTB are undeniably tough, they are definitely not perfect. With dynamic camber changes, uneven tire wear is practically a guarantee without regular alignments. And their long beams can sometimes bend under extreme stress, though it's pretty rare in normal everyday use. When it comes to maintenance, keep an eye on the bushings, ball joints, and radius arm mounts. These points take a lot of abuse and tend to wear out faster than the other parts. Replacing them isn't hard, but using quality parts will save you from constant repair. Ford's modern independent front suspensions are far more refined and easier to maintain, but they don't have the rugged simplicity of the twin I-Beam and TTB. Solid axles, like those in many Dodge and Jeep models, offer better articulation and strength for extreme off-roading, but they give up that cushiness ride comfort that Ford I-Beams are known for. For most drivers, the twin I-Beam and TTB strike a balance between comfort and capability that's pretty hard to beat. Off-road enthusiasts love their durability and how well they handle abuse, so how do the twin I-Beam and TTB stack up against the competition? Well, let's take a look. So, double wishbone, sure. They offered better handling and more predictable camber angles, but they couldn't match the sheer durability and off-road prowess of the twin I-Beam. Ford went for toughness and ride comfort instead of sharp road manners. But what about solid axles in the front, you say? Well, Dodge and GM stuck with solid axles in many of their trucks. And while these were rugged and offered excellent articulation for off-road use, they often rode rougher than the Ford Twin I-Beam. They also sent more vibration and noise into the cab, which made them less ideal for daily driving, you know, and getting groceries. For off-roaders, the TTB was a revelation. It combined the durability of the twin I-Beam with the added traction of a four-wheel drive drivetrain, giving enthusiasts a suspension that thrived on both trails and highways. But the TTB's complex geometry made it harder to maintain than a simpler solid axle setup. Aligning a twin I-Beam or TTB suspension is a dying art. Unlike standard suspensions, where alignment usually means tweaking camber, caster, and toe, the twin I-Beam's dynamic camber needs a deeper understanding of how it moves under load. Most alignment shops struggle with these setups because the knowledge is faded over time. The beam's pivots and radius arms create unique challenges. Getting the alignment right often means using specialized shims to fine-tune camber and caster angles. Those shims need to be carefully chosen based on the truck's setup and how you plan to use it. Inexperienced techs can throw off the alignment, causing uneven tire wear and bad handling. If you're looking for a shop to align your twin I-Beam or TTB equipped truck, look for older experienced techs or specialists who know classic Ford systems. Bringing a service manual or alignment spec can help make sure the job gets done right if they'll let you do that. If you're a shade tree mechanic, you might be able to handle a basic alignment on a twin I-Beam or TTB suspension with some common tools. Now, it's not going to replace a professional setup with the proper tools, but it can improve handling and tire wear until you can get it done professionally. So, here's how you tackle. Okay, so if you're doing this yourself, here's what you're going to need. A camber gauge, like the one I showed you earlier, or just a straight edge and a uh, level. Tape measure, some jack stands, and wrenches and sockets and uh, some alignment shims for the camber and caster adjustments. Got all that stuff? Okay, great. Here's what you do. First, check your ride height. You gotta make sure the truck's sitting at its normal ride height with all the usual weight installed, engine, transmission, you name it. The suspension geometry depends on load, so skipping this step can throw off all your adjustments. Next, you measure the camber by using a camber gauge or a straight edge and level against the wheel. Compare what you measure to the factory specs. If you need to adjust, you'll add or replace shims at the beam pivot points. Third step is to set your toe. Grab your tape measure and check the distance between the front and rear edges of the tires. You want the front measurement to be just a little closer than the rear for a slight toe in. Adjust the tie rods to dial it in. Step four, adjust your caster. This one's a bit trickier. Caster adjustments require shimming at the radius arms. You want to consult a service manual here to make sure you get it right. And finally, the final check. Once everything's adjusted, go back and recheck all your measurements, then take the truck out for a short drive. If it pulls to one side or chews through tires, then you know you need to tweak it some more. I know it's not very specific. Go out and get a shop manual, but really, that's your best friend in a situation like this. And while this process can help in a pinch, a professional alignment is still the gold standard for proper geometry, but hey, this is a great way to get your hands on with your suspension and learn more about your truck. One good thing about this type of suspension is that the aftermarket has fully jumped on with the twin I-Beam and TTB. Upgraded radius arms, beam braces, and heavy-duty bushings are easy to find and can boost strength and performance. 
This gets you your favorite too, giving you more ground clearance and room for bigger tires. Off-roaders love the TTB for its massive potential. With the right upgrades, these systems can dominate pretty much anything. Uh, rock crawling, desert racing, you name it. It's no wonder why they still have a loyal fan base decades after rolling off the line. Ford pushed the twin I-beam suspension as a breakthrough in truck design. Back in the day, Ford ads used animated diagrams to show off how the suspensions worked, highlighting its independent movement and durability. The TTB built on this legacy, becoming a legend in the off-road world, especially in Baja racing, where modified versions still compete today. Plenty of aftermarket long travel kits for desert racing take inspiration from the TTB's design, proving its lasting impact on off-road technology. Enthusiasts love how overbuilt these suspensions are, which is why they're still favorites for restoration and custom builds. And that's the quick and dirty story of Ford's twin I-beam and twin traction beam suspensions. Rugged, innovative, and a little quirky, just like the trucks they come on. Love them or hate them, you have to respect the engineering behind these designs. They've stood the test of time and remain a favorite among enthusiasts. So there you go, guys. Everything I know or pretend to know about the twin I-beam and twin traction beam suspension. Again, like I always say, if you learned something, give me a like and subscribe. That really helps me out. I appreciate it. Go uh, merch store, get yourself a cool hat. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, gripes, and ramblings, if I got something wrong, if I missed something, if you just want to yell at me for some reason, stick it in the comments. And once again, guys, thanks again so much for watching, and we will see you next time. She's rough around the edges, but she's doing fine. Tinkering away, getting things to shine. That old nose garage, she's considered divine. Thanks again for watching, we will see you next time.